In terms of water and nutrient management, the crops are going to use a similar amount of fertility requirements as an outdoor crop would. So you typically would do similar things that you would outside. Now, one thing to keep in mind with fertility management is because it doesn't rain inside of the tunnel, you're actually going to retain those nutrients better throughout the course of the season, whereas outside they might get washed away. So in some ways you may not have to do as much late season fertilizer injections as you might in the outside where it can get washed away by leaching. Watering on the other hand is a whole different story. Because the plants grow much more vigorously inside of them, they require quite a bit more water. And it never rains inside of a high tunnel. And so even when you get rain outside, you still have to keep watering inside of the tunnel. And this can be a challenge and also an important thing to consider when siting the high tunnel because you want to have close access to water. And if you want to do winter production, then you want to have close access to frost-free water. And that can be a big challenge for many of our growers too. So for most of our veggie crops, we'll water using drip irrigation. And one of the advantages, again, to growing inside of a high tunnel is you can keep the leaves of the plants dry, which is going to reduce disease quite a bit. So it's really important to maintain that with your irrigation methods by using drip irrigation. It's also much more water efficient and better for the plants too. Now if you're going to grow cover crops in the high tunnel, which is a really good idea, you're going to have to have some type of overhead irrigation, whether it's something temporary, just like hoses and impulse sprinklers, or you can have something actually built into the high tunnel that hangs from the ceiling. And we see growers do both of which. The other thing you can do for cover crops is in a three season tunnel, you're gonna pull that plastic off in the fall and let the rain and snow get to the soil. And so if you're growing a winter cover crop in a three season tunnel, then you don't have to worry about overhead irrigation. You can just do it with nature. Some growers will choose to use pollinators for their crops, although this isn't always typical. Many of our crops that we grow in high tunnels don't require pollinators. Some growers will choose to utilize pollinators within the high tunnels, especially for crops that require bee pollination like cucurbit crops. However, many growers do not do this. If you have enough wind in the tunnel with self-pollinating crops like tomatoes, then they'll pollinate on their own and pollinators will come into the high tunnel. But there are several things you can do, both in terms of bringing in pollinators that have been purchased or you can actually plant beneficial habitats in order to help attract the pollinators around the high tunnel. And I've seen both of these cases work very well. For disease management, typically we have much lower foliar leaf mold and bacterial leaf issues that we would outside. Because it doesn't rain inside of the high tunnel, disease management in terms of many of your leaf spot diseases is generally reduced. That being said, there are some diseases that actually do much better inside of a high tunnel, and so they're things to watch out for. Examples of this include powdery mildew and also botrytis can be a real issue if you have high humidity inside of the high tunnel. For pest management, there's a lot of different things you can do inside of a high tunnel that may not work as well as they do in the open field. Good examples of this is biological controls and beneficial habitats are typically more effective inside the high tunnel than they are in an open field situation. Because disease pressure can be reduced inside of a high tunnel since the leaves remain dry, and a lot of our biological products and other organic products work very effectively in the high tunnel, it's actually a bit easier to grow inside of a high tunnel organically than it is in the open field quite oftentimes. This is one of the reasons high tunnels have become so popular within the United States in the last 10 to 15 years is with the resurgence of a lot of our organic farms, many of them are using high tunnels in order to help manage their crops organically. Because oftentimes the crops are growing very vigorously and it's a very nice environment for the insects, certain species can balloon out of control and become a problem very quickly. Examples of these are aphids. They can oftentimes become a problem inside of the high tunnel and also spider mites. Spider mites really do not like rain, so they love it inside the high tunnel. And on hot summers, we can see spider mites be a problem on lots of different crops in the high tunnel. The other nice thing about the high tunnel is it never rains in there, and so it doesn't wash off pesticide residues. So one of the things that we see is that when we do spray pesticides inside of the high tunnel, they actually maintain activity for much longer periods, and we can reduce the frequencies of our pesticide applications. It's always a good idea to rotate your crops, whether you're in the open field or the high tunnel. But especially in the high tunnel, it's very important because the soil's not 
exposed to the outside environment to help freeze out potential pathogen spores or other things that can cause issues which are eliminated by crop rotation. Now for a lot of our growers this can be very challenging because there's only specific crops that they'll grow in the high tunnel. It can be tough to rotate between a cross crop species. But I would really encourage growers as they implement high tunnels to use crop rotations and to maintain good crop rotations that have at least a minimum of three years between the major crop families. A lot of our crops we like to do successional planting as well. And in this case, especially with quick season crops like cucumbers or lettuce, we can plant many, many crops throughout the course of the year, say at two week intervals or three week intervals. And this is gonna allow us a more stable harvest as the harvest season goes on and allow that grower to bring a more stable amount of crops to their farmer's market or other retail stands. And so it's important to do this. Now some of our crops like tomatoes, tomatoes are a very long season crop and so you might do two plantings of, of tomatoes in the high tunnel but probably not much more than that. That being said, one of the best things to grow in a high tunnel if you can fit it into your rotation is fall tomatoes. In that case we would actually plant the tomatoes about 1st of July, we use a heat set variety, and we would harvest those tomatoes in September, October, and November. And that can be a very profitable time for growers to be bringing tomatoes to market.